Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details with the Porsche 911 Restoration Series Part 4 and today we're going to be completing a wheels off detail on the Porsche. If you haven't watched the first three parts to this crazy detailing series then be sure to check them out. We covered the washing and decontamination process in huge detail in Part 1, the compounding stage in Part 2 and then the refining stage in Part 3. Parts 2 and 3 where we covered the paint correction process to restore the paintwork on the 911-996 Carrera 4S was split into two parts because there was just so much for me to teach you. I really am going all out with this crazy detailing series and I hope to set the standard for all videos going forwards. This Porsche 911 is currently undergoing a complete transformation in condition, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn those notification bell icons on so you don't miss the final episodes to this series. Also, why not hit that like button to help the videos out. At this point in the detail, now that the paintwork is finally corrected and refined, I would usually continue onto the ceramic coating application stage, but unfortunately at this point in the detail, my G-Technic ceramic coating delivery hadn't arrived. To stay productive, I made the decision of doing the wheels off detail and the interior detail whilst waiting for my ceramic coatings to arrive. I've decided to keep this video series in keeping with the car and the correct order of how the detail went, so today's job begins with taking the wheels off. The wheel bolts were carefully cracked before jacking the Porsche up one corner at a time and popping the car on axle stands. The wheel bolts were taken off and the huge Porsche wheels came off the car to reveal some seriously filthy and heavily contaminated arches. I worked on two wheels at a time out in the courtyard with the first step being the initial pre-rinse and soak with the iron fallout remover. I thoroughly agitated the product using my Swissfax detail brush followed with cleaning the tyre sidewalls with APC and a tough shine tyre brush. Something I often find myself telling people within the training days is quite simply the longer you spend doing most of these different aspects of detailing then the better the finish is going to be. The Porsche twist alloys were no exception to this rule, so I well and truly spent the time doing them some justice. The fronts of the wheels were not overly dirty or heavily contaminated, so they didn't cause me a problem. With the fronts taken care of with this initial decontamination stage, I flipped them round and began working on the inner barrels. As you can see, which is very common with these customer vehicles that I detail, the inner barrels haven't been decontaminated to a decent standard in quite some time. I have noticed a few areas of blistering which may have gone past the point of no return, but for me as a professional business, it's my job to get the wheels looking as good as I can. Once again the process is going to begin with allowing the iron fallout product to soak onto the wheels before agitating using the Swissfax wheel brush. This process was completed 4 times in total for the inner barrels which did remove the vast majority of that baked on brake dust. 
After those four attempts of agitating and rinsing the iron fallout product from the wheels, I did begin to feel that I had got them to a point where very little else was being removed. The problem when you don't clean the inside of the barrels over an extended period of time is going to make them rather difficult to fully detail years down the line. The front wheels of the Porsche cleaned up practically perfectly, whereas the rears did still have a few blister marks from that stubborn brake dust. I'm guessing that due to the rear wheels being so damn wide, the owners of the car prior to it being purchased recently by my customer didn't bother getting their wheel brushes deep into the barrels when cleaning. The option is there for the current owner to get the wheels refurbed, however in my opinion the wheels are now looking good enough. Not 100%, in fact the one on the right could do with a refurb, but what do you expect with a car that is almost 20 years old? With the primary contamination and concern for these wheels being the built up brake dust, I did complete the iron fallout process multiple times. I then followed with the tar and glue remover stage for a few separate hits to remove quite a few road tar deposits, not forgetting a few areas of glue residue from previous wheel weights. Quite simply apply the tar and glue remover liberally to the wheels and give the product just a short moment to react with the road tar contamination. Take your microfiber towel and continue to wipe away at the wheels, removing those black blobs of tar. If there's one thing I love about detailing is taking the wheels off and being able to fully detail them inside out. The tar and glue remover stage is also incredibly good at removing any greasy residue and this product even made a decent impact into diminishing down those heavily stained and blistered areas. With the fronts and backs of the wheels dealt with using the tar and glue remover, the wheels were given a final pressure rinse before taking them back inside the unit. With the initial decontamination of the wheel sorted, the next step is to fully blow dry the wheels, although for some reason I didn't record any footage of me doing this, so you'll have to take my word for it. I opted to use Auto Finesse Rejuvenate Pre-Wax Cleanser and a microfiber applicator pad to polish the wheels. I'm not a huge fan of the Repez Hybrid Nano, and with the primary objective for this vehicle being the paintwork, I found polishing them by hand was the better option. Polishing the wheels was a simple case of being incredibly thorough whilst working the pad over every centimetre of the wheels painted surface. In return I managed to remove a few more stubborn marks from the finish and of course I managed to give the wheels a deep gloss finish. The pre-wax cleanser is going to further clean the surface of the clear coated alloys, polish them to create a slick and smooth surface, remove light scratches and minor paint imperfections and to remove any final traces of previous wax or polish residue if there did happen to be any. We are going to be ceramic coating these wheels so it is all part of the prep. After a thorough working in, a fresh microfiber towel was used to buff the polished residue and to reveal a nicely enhanced finish for the porker's beefy wheels. The wheels were flipped around and once again the inner barrels and behind the spokes were polished by hand and with the deep dish diameter of the porker twist wheels, I did spend quite a bit of time giving everywhere a good going over. There were a few final marks and blisters on the inner barrel of one of the rear wheels which I wasn't able to do anything about. Without giving the wheels a full on refurb, this was the best I was able to achieve. 
Don't get me wrong, the wheels do now look absolutely fantastic, and this is even before smothering them with a ceramic coating. The final preparation stage is to wipe the wheels down with IPA in order to remove those polish oils and residue so that the ceramic coating is able to make a direct bond with the clear coated surface. The tyres were given a secondary clean with IPA in order to remove any final traces of grease, previous tyre dressing or dirt in general in order for the luxury Swissfax tyre dressing to make a proper bond and last for weeks and weeks. The 4S centre caps were popped in and wiped down with IPA after a short but sweet hand polish. G-Technic C5 wheel armour is an incredibly good ceramic coating for protecting the one area on your vehicle which is prone to the toughest type of contamination which is brake dust. This ceramic coating is going to make your wheels far easier to keep clean, they will also remain looking glossier and cleaner for far longer due to the surface being naturally shinier and dirt and water repellent. This additional bolt-on service upgrade is well worth every penny. C5 creates a chemical bond with your wheel's clear coated surface offering a supreme level of protection against dirt and contamination buildup. If your wheels were protected with C5 from day one of their life and then topped up once every two to three years and provided that you don't use brick acid to clean them, they are going to remain in brand new condition. This is the reason why ceramic coatings exist, they are here to preserve the original condition of the surfaces that they are applied to, and boy with having nearly 4 years of experience working with ceramic coatings, I can ensure you that they do work and they do perform how Gtanic suggest, but you still do need to take the correct care of them going forwards, which in all honesty, is pretty simple. The key to a correctly performing ceramic coating is quite simply all in the prep and the application, and the aftercare, but prep is key, the rest is easy. Using a G-Technic finger foam applicator, apply an adequate amount of ceramic coating to cover your first section, which for me is the whole front face of the wheel. Ensure that no areas are missed, and do bear in mind that this product is a very runny liquid, so it does spread quite far. You do not need to overuse this product and with the correct lighting you will be able to see the product residue on the surface of the wheel. Spread this residue out nicely and evenly, cover your entire section, then gently wipe the excess residue using two microfiber towels. The first towel is going to remove the majority of the excess product and when you do take your second towel, this is going to remove all final traces. Inspect your work with a trusty LED light to ensure a complete removal process and one awesome finish within the wheel surface. Repeat this same process for the inner barrels and behind the spokes with the G-Technic applicator and a fresh application of C5 wheel armour. When the wheels have been fully coated, they will need to remain indoors for the following 12 hours to allow them to fully cure. Whilst not being exposed to any water or liquid of any form and the room temperature must stay above 5 degrees. When those 12 hours are over, provided that the rest of the car is finished, it's free to leave the unit and to be enjoyed out on the roads. The next step and one that I wish I completed outside at the beginning of the detail is giving the arches an incredibly good clean. 
If you are wondering why there are covers on the Porsche, then in short, I worked a late night at the unit the day before to get the paintwork finished. I left the roller shutter door open and due to leaving the lights on, I was joined by a party of nighttime flies and insects. These flies like to drop tiny little poops as they fly around the room and when the poo lands on the paintwork, the little dots of shit are surprisingly difficult to remove. Considering that the machine polishing had just been completed, it was not a good thing to happen. The car was covered in various microfiber towels and the roller shutter door will never be opened at night time again. Back to the wheels off detail and I have begun the process with applying a whole bunch of all purpose cleaner diluted 5 to 1. I'm using a Swiss Fax wheel brush to agitate the product into all accessible areas of the arches and I'm taking my time doing it. The objective when cleaning and a sure sign that the surface in question is clean is that the product should eventually become nice and sudsy. If you've ever cleaned anything really dirty before, then usually when you begin there are no soapy suds present, but after a few passes, the product does become nice and sudsy. When this does finally happen for these rather greasy and dirty areas, it gives you a good feeling that you are doing the job justice. Take this for example, then the first initial clean that I gave the arches, well the product wasn't very sudsy at all, whereas on the second hit with APC, dilution exactly the same, the product is becoming nice and sudsy. That first attempt took the bulk of the grease and grime off, so the second hit is able to clean those surfaces even further. After both attempts, the arches were wiped down with microfiber towels to clean them up, and they were then given a bit of time to dry naturally. With the vehicle already being inside the unit, I wasn't exactly able to crack out the pressure washer. The calipers were wiped down with IPA to remove any polish oils or residue and a layer of G-Tanic C5 wheel armour was applied, making the brake calipers on the porker nice and easy to keep clean. Please bear in mind that the calipers were already decontaminated whilst the vehicle was outside. Meguiar's hyperdressing, although rather expensive but can be diluted down to suit your needs to make it a little less damaging on the pocket, is my recommended product for dressing the arches. In comparison to Auto Finesse Dressel, which happens to be my preferred product for the interior surfaces, well with hyperdressing from Meguiar's, it will provide you with tougher and longer lasting protection on the surfaces that it's applied to. The downside to this is that the Meguiar's variant is a glossier finish than Auto Finesse Dressel, which is why I don't use hyperdressing for the interior. Dressel just doesn't last long enough on the arches, which is why I use Meguiar's. I applied two layers of hyperdressing to each arch and gave each layer roughly 30 minutes to dry naturally. There's no point in wiping off the excess product when doing this stage, because you may as well leave it to all dry naturally, so that the product can soak onto the plastic surfaces, in return making the finished result last even longer. With the arches and brake calipers taken care of, not forgetting the completion of both rear wheels, it's time to put the wheels back on. I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain the process of putting wheels back on a car, so I'll leave you with some random shots of the refitting stage.
before dropping the porker back down, I'm going to dress the ties with Swiss Fax Pneu, which in my opinion is quite simply the best tie dressing currently available. It does take just a few moments of your time to neatly dress the ties with this product, and when it is all dried out naturally, the ties will be looking incredibly rich. You can opt to apply two layers of this stuff, and for the ties that haven't been dressed in quite some time, they will benefit from the two layers. When the tyres are dressed, the axle stands are removed and the vehicle is dropped back down before torquing up the wheel bolts to the correct setting. There's still three episodes due out to complete this epic detailing series including the ceramic coating stage, the interior detail stage and the engine base stage and all of the finishing touches, so stay tuned to the channel and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the following parts to this series. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, just search JP Details. Feel free to visit the JP Details online store, link in the description below. Please drop the video a like to help me out, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.